All right, everyone, we're back, and like previously promised, we have with us today Dr. Gerard van den Artevech. He's a very prominent uh, therapist, researcher uh, over there. He's coming to us from just outside of Amsterdam. Doctor, how are you today? I am fine. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you so much for joining us. I've been, uh, ever, since, ever since I heard of your name and uh, I've seen some of the good talks that you gave on the Internet, um, I've been wanting to get a, uh, get a hold of you, and as I'm very grateful that you've made the time to uh, come and speak to us today. Your uh, credentials to discuss... Uh, the issues of homosexuality. For basically, for over 60 years, you have been researching this. You've been doing, uh, you have your master's in psychology, you got your PhD, uh, you've had your private practice since 1962, uh, you've spoken at universities, you've, you've, you've taught there, um, you've spoken also in, in church forums as well. You're author of several books, and I think you're a, a very good authority on uh, this idea of homosexuality. So um, tell us a little bit maybe about your, your, your past and how you kind of came into studying this. Well, it's, it started uh, when I was a student. I got the task to study the marriage of André Gide. André Gide was the, the pedophile, homosexual. Perhaps he is not very well known in the, in the United States, eh? but in France it was, a cele it, it was and is still a celebrity. Okay. He had a Nobel Prize in literature in the, in the 50s. And, uh, and then I, uh, well, I, uh, I, had, I had to dig deeper and deeper in this whole problem of homosexuality. Okay. And I wrote some things about that, and then from one thing came the other. And then you slide down, downwards <laughs> into the morass, so to say. Yes. Yeah. Eventually, it, it came to uh, a dissertation, a doctoral dissertation in Amsterdam, on homosexuality and homosexual pedophilia okay. as neurosis, as sexual neurosis. Mm -hmm. That was a thesis. Yes. And, uh, and then... Yeah, you can say a little bomb exploded. Sure. Uh, because um, to me, not wholly, but yet in the, in the intensity it had, the explosion, that was uh, unexpected to me. Okay. Much criticism and much uh, a tumult uh, because all uh, also in that time, uh, it was in '67. Uh, mm -hmm. um, in Amsterdam, was uh, in the forefront of the gay movement, uh, and and so, but it was interesting on the other side, mm -hmm. where many people interested, and uh, so there were debates and so on and so forth. Sure. Things were possible then in Amsterdam at the liberal university, the University of Amsterdam, and red lefties, but yet. There was a kind of tolerance and possibility to uh, to defend politically not correct things. Mm -hmm. Now this is over. It's, I, I wouldn't have succeeded. Yes, I think, uh, defending things. I'm, I'm I'm telling now. Yeah, yeah. The the, uh, the environment okay, and then it started, and then you get uh, many people who are people with this problem huh? mm -hmm. who call me and say, yes I want to have a, a chat with you or the, can I be treated or or they wanted to tell their personal lives so that that started uh, my career I had to defend things and then after uh, getting more and more and more clients who is also with this problem sure. uh, I could make statistical studies uh, statistical studies about several things, about character traits, about background factors and so on. Okay. That, that's excellent. Um, one of the things I think we wanted to, to, to clear off right at the beginning is um, there's a difference between same-sex attraction 
and homosexuality. Uh, maybe there's different ways of phrasing it, but I think that's basically what, what we can stick with for today is that the same sex attraction that's people who experience this attraction but don't act on it and homosexuals act on that. Is, is it correct to say that? Yeah, I might say uh, I think it's a little bit uh, confusing, eh, the terminology. Yeah, used. yeah. But homosexual, homosexuality is the general term, international, eh, for okay. everyone with this kind of problem. Okay. Um, I think uh, in English, the word gay is more used for those who normalize it with themselves and who justify it with themselves or and who uh, who try to live that lifestyle mm -hmm. and uh, the gay movement yeah, it has a negative tone yeah, right it. and um, and the homosexual but homosexual is more or less the neutral term for it huh? okay but okay but you are right to make the distinction between um, people who have these feelings, let's say, uh, desires, feelings, fantasies, uh, to some degree, in some form, uh, there are many shades and, and, and nuances, uh, nuances of, of, of these, uh, these feelings. Um, people who have these feelings and who, um, who want to act them out, and they want to uh, tell themselves yes I, I am that way and I it is okay and I can be happy that way and, and so on and so forth and people who do not do that and um, many of them are religious people sure. but by far not all not all of them you have people who are, have no religion at all but they they come and they say I see it's not normal, it's not natural, okay. and, and I'm not happy with it. Huh? Right, yeah. right. So is there, how, how many of maybe mm -hmm. the, the patients that you've seen uh, say that it's not a normal thing versus those who, who believe that they were just made that way? Well, most people with this problem who come with me, mm -hmm. who come to the therapy as a psychologist, of course, are the ones who seek for information, who seek mm. for a bit of self-knowledge. Sure. So I think 80% 80, 80 yeah, who come are of the small group. It's a minority group. Yeah? Okay, yeah. In our days. Also because, naturally, because the propaganda is very fierce. Uh, the gay movement... Uh, well, uh, reigns supremely, mm -hmm. so just in our days, and uh, and so many people are astonished to hear that there are alternative views of it as well, right. and uh, and so many youngsters with this problem are being seduced or convinced, or persuaded by publicity by by everyone. Mm -hmm including by pastors and, and doctors, uh, to live that way. Right. It, Not it, that they are, uh, all of them are happy with it. That's quite a different thing. Eh? Hmm. So there is a, let's, uh, let, us, let me uh, say it clearly, uh, there is a lot of ignorance, a lot of ignorance about the facts and about the truth. And there is a lot of lying, propagandistic lying and so the image people have of what homosexuality is is quite distorted it's absolutely not realistic it's not the truth and uh, and these um, falsehoods which are in the heads of most people nowadays must be corrected must be must be criticized mm -hmm. so uh, you have even w within the Catholic Church you have people like F Jesuit uh, American Jesuit Father James Martin I don't know if you've heard of him or not he's a very yes. big very big proponent of of you know God made you that way 
Um, did God make people gay? Is is this normal? What what makes people? What causes them to have these these feelings? There are several questions in one. Huh? Yes, yeah, it's complicated. They, I they, yeah. they are <laughs> they they are very much related. In the first place, um, no one is born that way. That's my thesis, and it had always been, and it is a, there is nothing scientifically solid which proves or even which would um, indicate with some probability that there are physical factors which cause homosexuality. Okay. So physical? Do you mean like biological? Physical is in a person's biological, makeup. Biological, physical, biological, physical, okay. inborn, or other biological factors. Huh? Okay. Uh, sickness in, 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 in during pregnancy or whatever. I see. Okay. Um, no. It's the interesting thing is there has been done a lot of research. Um, financed, funded by um, pro-gay organizations and published in scientific magazines, scientific journals, a lot of uh, research intended, in, in fact, to show some or to demonstrate, to discover some physical cause. But it came to do not. Hmm. They couldn't find any. That's very anything. interesting. And this is this is a, a fact which is, let us say, ig not only ignored but suppressed mm -hmm. in, in publicity in the media. But that is very interesting. Just uh, from the 90s on, research in the field of brain anatomy, uh, hormones, genes. Um, and with they, all of that, show, there's they show uh, homo, uh, people with homosexual feelings or lesbian feelings. Uh, women, women um, have absolutely normal physical makeup. Hmm. So they they are basically they are normal. Okay. And uh, on the other hand, a lot of research has shown solid relationships with environmental factors in childhood, family factors, yeah? within family factors, yeah? uh, sure. relationship with parents, methods of education, hmm. yeah? Bring, oh, being brought up. Really? Okay. And, uh, and this is, this is a, a field where things have been found, solid facts. So in the biological fact, uh, uh, field, nothing has been found. In the field of, let us say, psychology, mm -hmm. let's just say simply, um, a lot of things have been found, and not only in one or two studies, but in in series of studies, in all kinds of cultures. Hmm. So, so there is uh, a lot of good insight into the causes but they are psychological. So you have, the, so the, like the way a person is brought up, maybe uh, the absence of one parent. Uh, have you, like, have you found that like absence of a father in a household ten, would, would lead to that? Or, or maybe an abusive father, like daddy issues, we would call them over here. Is that something that would be uh, something that would start that? The, the, the main factors in statistical order, in, in order of statistical weight, mm -hmm. the first factor is the maladaptation, maladjustments, not uh, uh, in, in the peer group. Oh, really? Okay. The same sex peer group. Okay. So not and fitting in with friends. Especially in adolescence. All right. Okay. So you might, and it is for for girls. Uh, it's the same thing, huh? Okay. So a boy who feels not belonging mm -hmm. 
to the, to the boyhood world, to the world of adolescence, to the world of man, mm -hmm. you might say, in that, in, in that phase of development. Sure. He is the one who may develop these feelings. Okay. Now, so that is the most, the, the, the most, the closest correlation, so to say, uh, if I, I am clear mm -hmm. in the expression. Yes. But, of course, there are causes for not feeling uh, belonging, belonging, and not feeling I see. equal to other boys, mm -hmm. feel inferior as to your boy, boyishness, as to your masculinity, mm -hmm. as, as to femininity, in the case of the girl. Mm -hmm. And the background factors are indeed, and then, then we come to fathers and mothers in the family. Okay. But they are not, these factors are not so convincing as the peer contact factor. Hmm. And um, and the, the, in the case of the boy, the, the pre-homosexual boy, we might say, mm -hmm. or the boy who starts getting these feelings, having these feelings, um, I think there is more indication that the mother is the first important person. Okay. Because what do we see? The character of the boy is most of the time, I simplify, of course, then there are, there are variations, mm -hmm. uh, several uh, a group of variations. So we have to, to see there are categories. Right. right. But to make it simple, to simplify, uh, the mother um, <clears throat> is too important emotionally in the, in the life of the boy. Mm -hmm. let, let it be simple. The well-known thing is the too domineering mother. Oh, okay. All right. The, the mother who clings too much to the boy. Mm -hmm. Mother who adores the boy, who favors him too much. Mm. These are... In, as a matter of fact, not not very balanced relationships. Right. And then you are right. The father, the mother, and the father factor play together. Uh, so, mm. in uh, in the absence of the father, a, a mother who clings too much to a boy for what reason, whatever reason. Mm -hmm. And you feel uh, balanced, and perhaps can we say emotionally more happy mm -hmm. mothers uh, have not that tendency that much. Hmm. But um, in the absence of the father, right. this works uh, more negatively, hmm. and. Uh, if there is a father who has a good relationship with the boy, right. yeah, and then as a man, then some fathers have a reasonably good relationship with such a boy, but mm -hmm. they may have a problem in, in, in their own masculine um, development. Mm -hmm. And um, so they are sometimes weak fathers. Yeah? Right, right. Weak weak personalities mm -hmm. in the field of masculinity and so the boy has not a good example in masculinity masculinity his masculine instincts so to say are underdeveloped suppressed by a too close or too coercive bond with mother is maybe a very also a very tender bond mm. Uh, but like the French uh, author uh, Proust, uh, Marcel Proust, mm -hmm. uh, he wrote to his mother, his father was not very important in his life, mm -hmm. right. was there, but, but his mother, a young, very young uh, woman when she... Uh, 
she got his boy, his mother uh, claimed him no? mm -hmm, right. and adored him. And he wrote every, every morning a love letter to his mother. Oh, wow. Okay. And, and things like that. So he could not, his mother love, which I say is not a very, um, not a very pure love. Oh, okay. I mean, it's self-centered. I see. Okay. And a mother who clings to a child, she claims him. Yeah? Right, he's, right, right. He's mine. And that is the point. This suppresses the boy's masculine development. Wow. Okay. He cannot so suppressed or underdeveloped masculinity. That's that's the term. Right? Mm -hmm. and in the in the case of girls, suppressed or underdeveloped femininity. Okay. Is and so you can imagine there are many factors in mothers as well as fathers. Right. Who, well, who are not favor, uh, who do not favor a healthy development in the field of your uh, manliness or femininity, mm -hmm. which are, I have to say, and criticize at the same time, a gay falsehood. Mm -hmm. We are born differently as men or as women. Right. Boy has instinctively, not by learning, but by instinct, by inborn instinct, the tendency to identify with manly things. Mm -hmm. He likes that, but can be suppressed mm -hmm. if there are too many feminizing influences. And then you get a character which is rather weak right. and soft to yourself. And that is very general in many homosexual men. So it's a character problem in the first place. Mm -hmm. The character problem of underdeveloped masculinity. And then if such a boy who is rather weak and oversensitive and more like that and uh, not combative mm -hmm. like other Right. Yeah. So he, he lacks, let us say, healthy aggressivity. Right. A boy, a boy who is boyish and who feels happy in that, he has a, a certain aggressive mm -hmm. right. tendency, which is not negative. Huh? Right. Yeah. No, okay. the uh, aggression sure. to a degree is normal to boyhood yeah. and manhood but and a, everything. But a boy who, who is feminized in his in his upbringing, mm -hmm. by lack of father attention, by lack of, and in sometimes in the case of the father, 30% uh, of, of fathers you about are uh, too critical of their boys. Okay. You know, but we should not exaggerate the uh, the negative father. Mm -hmm. it's, it's the mother more than the father. Wow. Okay. And um, but it is true that the father can, uh, if he tries, and and he can stand the influences, he can neutralize the influences mm -hmm. of everything, which is which is questionable in many cases, mm -hmm. uh, even if he wants to. But um, the fact is that uh, the father uh, can neutralize, but that the boy who cannot develop his, his bad masculine instincts, feels at last, feels not belonging to the world of his peers. Okay. And here we get the, the traumatic point. He feels inferior in mm -hmm. masculinity. And feeling inferior in masculinity may lead, it doesn't necessarily need, mm -hmm. uh, to lead, but may lead to um, feelings of adoration of certain types of boys who, in his view, are inaccessible. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, they possess what I don't. So they are masculine and they are 
sportsmanlike or they are popular boys or mm-hmm. they're, they're daring. They're daring. Mm. And he feels, I've, done, I've not. And from that adoration may start in puberty, may start old, or early puberty, early adolescence, may start fantasies of having such a, an idol mm-hmm. as a friend and then being loved by him. Hmm. Oh, wow. So, okay. So let's, let's uh, coin two, um, two, two terms. Not belonging may lead to a crave for belonging. A crave for belonging to, to those manly types to those young uh, sportive boys mm-hmm. uh, who have uh, uh, this, this joy of life or, or this, well, uh, strength, mm-hmm. inner strength, right. Uh, right. or even this, um, well, this insolence of boys, mm-hmm. which I don't have. Mm. Or a boy who is very much a mother's boy, may also be a very obedient boy, submissive, hmm. very gentle. But, and then in his heart, he adores those other types. Hmm. Because he feels an outsider. Not belonging is traumatic. Right. Every, every person wants to belong. No? Yeah, right, right. On the part and then having friends. So it starts with normal Adoration, you might say, but in, in puberty, the adoration may uh, may become very strong and very intense, and also be accompanied by feelings of the non-belonging, which is a depressive, mm. if you are the feelings. And then we get also an admixture of a very important feeling, and it's the feeling of self-dramatization. Oh, okay. Puberty, puberty, adolescence is the time we, yeah, people, uh, we have the tendency to uh, to feel dramatic about ourselves, mm. a little bit tragic. Right? Yeah, yeah, we we well, focus very much no on ourselves. Yeah. Nobody knows what I have to suffer, and so on and so on. Huh? Mm. In itself, this is a normal reaction, but in some uh, children, in some young youth, uh, it gets uh, a big intensity, mm. and uh, and this is this, this is the basis from which these erotic feelings for others can start, uh, a longing for uh, intimate affection, mm-hmm. then comes factors. Uh, there comes the additional factors like masturbation and the masturbation with fantasies, having such a friend who mm. loves me and so on. But now I make this point. What begins as a, an adolescent fling uh, or adolescent uh, longings, more or less pathetic longings, yeah, mm-hmm. as a fact. Um, can become an addiction. Certainly, when the sexual factor comes comes in, uh, and uh, the boy in in his lonely periods, uh, in his daydreaming period, uh, starts masturbating and start um, uh, fantasizing about uh, what he thinks is love, hmm. but what in effect is longing for being loved. Right. He imagines an idol who is loving me and who is completely for me. You know? Mm-hmm. So it's, it's me-ness. It's self-love. The reaction of self-love. However, well, normal it may be, or however human, that's better, put better. You know? Sure. Uh, how, however human, um, yet it is a meanness. It's uh, seeking love for me. Mm-hmm. And this can become in a fantasy uh, an illusion 
which is chased and chased and it becomes obsessive. Yeah. And then it can start, he can start seeking partners and so on and so forth. But the, uh, the point is, it remains a craving. Mm, okay. It remains seeking, ah, adoring love from you, from mm. him, from him, from him. So, essentially is craving. Self-seeking love as compensation, like in many other inferiority complexes. One very simple comparison. Mm -hmm. Boy who feels and who is a poor boy, financially poor, mm -hmm. poor. Huh? His parents cannot afford uh, give him any presents when he is uh, on his birthday and so on. And now he is in in a class, a classroom, or in a school, or in a neighborhood, uh, and his friends are rich boys. Huh? So he may feel self pity. Mm -hmm. He may feel inferior. Inferiority complex may uh, hmm. uh, uh, come into existence, and well, and he may dream about being rich or being powerful, mm. and this dream may become a crave. And if he does not overcome these immature dreams, mm -hmm. perhaps he becomes a rich man. Huh? He is after money, he becomes a money neurotic, so to say. Mm -hmm. yeah? He gets possessions and poss possessions. But in work, this crave is not uh, passed, is not overcome. And uh, he, he remains the, the little boy who is a poor one. Mm -hmm. So it's in the homosexual. The homosexual, the adult homosexual, is certainly partly and... and in many cases, for a large part, is uh, fixated in his teens emotionally. Okay. And so, is he stuck like mentally as a teenager? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes, and and uh, in, in in his sexuality, in okay. his ador adoration for, uh, hmm. he's seeking the God who loves him. Right. So it's not love, but self-love. Okay. And and that uh, blocks his sexual development. Uh, mm -hmm. it, it is an obsession. Yeah. It's an obsession, and he can repress, try to repress, but okay, it, it is a fight to overcome this. Mm -hmm. Okay, I gave a, a general formula. Eh? Sure, sure. And. Um, and, and you have to study very uh, many people individually to right. see, yes, but but this general line mm -hmm. is is very very general. So yeah, say. absolutely. Uh, it, it seems like a boy uh, suffering, you know, in, in that situation, mm -hmm. is then more vulnerable to sexual predators, right? Yes, because he's. Some are. Some are because he wants the attention. He wants all of this, and then if yes. if somebody like a priest who's grooming and and looking for vulnerable boys um, mm -hmm. finds a boy like this, they they know who to look for. They're not going to look for a boy who's who's going to punch the priest in the nose if he tries to do something. Yeah. Yeah. He leaves yeah. those yeah. guys alone. So is yeah. that where? Right where sexual abuse then comes in. So all these things, it sounds like you described, are the, the, the very the basic component, and then the sexual abuse yes. then follows. Is that right? Yes. yes. Well, sexual abuse is very much exaggerated okay. as, a, as, a, as a causative factor. It okay. exists, and it may co-contribute. -contrib okay. Uh, like many other things, like sex education in in the classroom, like um, <clears throat> like teasing in uh, at sports, uh, uh, being teased, uh, uh, the boy who doesn't dare, uh, right, fighting uh, in competitive sports and so on. Uh. Mm -hmm. These factors are, but most important is not the abuse, and I want to warn also against this. Um, there is trauma, there is trauma in, in childhood, of, of course. Mm -hmm. But first, 
there is also something else in many homosexual men. Now we are talking about men, huh? sure. and women is uh, slightly different. Um, but there's uh, in the first place another factor, and that is that um, the boy who is well mother's favorite boy and uh, even adored in some or even when he is domineered in a negative way mm-hmm. mother's chamber mates that's, that's uh, also a type huh? mm-hmm. this boy has the feeling at home that he is the center of the world he feels and he feels an if you are adored in childhood by your parents, that's not so good. Mm. Uh, the ego says, well, I am more than the rest. So, hmm. on the one hand, in many homosexuals, there is male homosexuals in the first place, there is a superiority feeling under, underneath. On the other hand, an inferiority feeling as yeah. to their masculinity, as to their manliness. Wow. But, but they feel elite. Huh. I'm more, I'm more sensitive. I'm hmm, a little genius. Mm-hmm. I'm very artistic, and so on. Right. So that is uh, that is that is mother's view of them. Right. So um, we should not make the fault to dramatize this inner situation of every homosexual man. Right. Of some, yes, and of some who give in to these impulses and start this life uh, which which ends in, in, in feeling a wreck, so to say, and, and loneliness and so on, because it's it's it leads nowhere. Yeah. It leads downward. But um, that's the first thing, and the, and, the, and the second point is that um, the feeling of being a victim is very central, mm. and they they transfer that feeling, that self feeling, to other people, and then they they must be treated like yeah like special people. Mm-hmm. Sp- privileges and so on. Huh? Yeah, I, I think it's, that's uh, that's evident in that's evident in the way homosexuals are treated in society. Perpetual yeah. victims, but always more important than everyone else. Their causes are more important. We see that in actors. We have an American actor, Je- yes. Jesse Smollett, who who uh, engineered a false hate crime against himself. He was. Oh, yeah. Found to have actually that's, that's self dramatization. Eh? Yeah, yeah. So it's an addiction to sex, but it's also an addiction mm-hmm. to self dramatization. Hmm. Feeling tragic, yeah. feeling the tragic hero, hmm. huh? and yeah. that is adolescent thinking. You see, it's yeah. immature thinking. Yeah, very much so. In yeah. fact, you are uh, you are an ordinary boy, uh, ordinary man like everyone. Mm-hmm. No, I'm not, and and tragic. Hmm. So. Huh? Amazing. So, uh, wallowing, wallowing in self pity and, and in the role of the, the martyr. Yeah. The martyr role. And this is also for the homosexual movement, for the gay movement, uh, one of their great strengths to, um, well, to play the martyr. Always we are persecuted. Mm. We're always, mm, which historically. Not so as they say, right? Yeah? But um, yeah, but yes, uh, when you are the martyr, and they compare themselves with the Jews in the war, mm-hmm. right? Uh, and which is absolutely wrong. Then uh, you get attention, mm-hmm. and you get a privileged position, and you and so on and so forth. So what I want to say is there is a lot of self-seeking. Basically, if a man with homosexual tendencies would overcome his deep self-seeking, he would be cured. Hmm. He would be cured. And that is the battle we have to yeah. teach. We have to teach the, the client. Mm-hmm. So it's a battle for normality. 
and it's a battle against a deep instinct of self-love. Hmm. Wow. And you asked, okay, I, I'm talking too much. No, <laughs> no, that's all right. No, that's, that's Ev- why I'm here. everybody here is is transfixed by what you're saying because because we don't hear this. This is we don't hear this in our society. We're like you're saying. We're always hearing of them as the victim, despite the fact that every little small legal victory they're given, they take more and they want more. It's never enough for them. Over here, they legalized gay marriage, and it turned immediately to transgender rights, and it's just more and more and more all the time. It's insatiable. Yeah. Insatiable. Yeah. And it, it will ever go on. Correct. You can have, so that's, that is the neurotic thing. Huh? Mm-hmm. Your, uh, you, you may call it neurotic, the, right. because in many neuroses is this tendency to be addicted to complaining about yourself, yep. about feeling the martyr. I am the poor one, and I am, a, which is, of course, uh, self-love. Mm-hmm. Right. It's the self-love. The complaining tendency, there was a Dutch uh, psychiatrist who stressed this very much, very good. It comes from the school, uh, uh, Viennese psychoanalytic school, uh, the past, uh, Wilhelm Stekel. Stekel was a Jewish uh, psychiatrist and uh, sexologist, uh, when the first uh, disciple of Freud, in fact. Okay. But it have, has an interesting uh, history, these, these insights. But it's a fact. Complaining, the complaining tendency, right? complaining sickness, inner complaining sickness. Hmm. And many homosexuals suffer from that. And that it comes from their adolescence and so on. But if you have a too weak character, mm-hmm. let us let us uh, use another concept, an old concept, the old Greek and Roman concept of fortitude. Okay. The first, one of the first four virtues. Mm-hmm. That's right. Yeah. The character defect of many homosexual men lies in this area of lack of fortitude mm-hmm. fortitude to yourself mm-hmm. huh? to be soft to yourself to give in to yourself mm. to indulge in yourself pusillanimity that's a tough word <laughs> yeah you're uh, um, well, um, so this softness mm-hmm. uh, leads to the yeah giving in yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and 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 not being combative right so and, and also to hmm, to think uh, to seek uh, easy solutions mm-hmm. not being in a in a healthy way tough to yourself right right right. And a boy should be brought up with a certain toughness to himself. Mm-hmm. This is a very important thing. Mm-hmm. So I do not blame people with homosexual feelings for this lack of toughness to themselves. Mm-hmm. Because I know it's in large part the effect of certain upbringing right, right. problems. I do not blame blame their parents because many of them have their own problems. Mm-hmm. Right. A mother who is who feels sufficiently feminine and with normal feminine self confidence, and and a father, the same, mm-hmm. uh, uh, which implies that the mother, the feminine, the normally feminine mother, wants wants wishes a man with manly qualities mm-hmm. okay right and and the other way around then you have the good relationship many imbalances in this area hmm, of uh, in, in with the parents are encountered in the background in the family background of homosexual men mm. and women so it's also 
if we want to prevent homosexuality, which is very important, we should come back to basics in marriage life. Like, mm -hmm. the man must be the man, not a macho mm -hmm. man, because that's puerile, puerile as well. Right, right. But a man, he, he needs and with a firm hand, mm -hmm. also necessary, encouraging, mm -hmm. and the woman, the woman. Mm -hmm. The mother, the woman, the heart, uh, and the head, as it has always been. Mm -hmm. But we must come back to these points. In but in love, in with cheerfulness, yeah. in love. And then you may get a boy who perhaps is physically weak, physically weak, who has physical defects, mm -hmm. or, or even crippled, or whatever, uh, or who is... Um, a little bit disfigured mm -hmm. in his face or uh, by a sickness or whatever, or, or a very sickly boy, or a small boy. Or a... But if the father and the mother have that relationship and that example, and they treat him like a boy, you are a boy, yeah, you are a little bit sick, but you are a boy, mm -hmm. yeah. then this boy will be happy as a boy and he will never become a homosexual and this is so what you're expressing here is basically it's what the church has always taught for the family the mother is the the heart and the nurture of the family the father is the head yes. the the when the father is he leads when he's sacrificial uh when he's self-giving for his family and everything uh, that helps balance everything out, um, and all of this happens when both the mother and the father have fortitude because they need to pursue their their vocations. Um, it's it's amazing, you know. <laughs> the church got it right. It should, psychology it's, 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 proves that the church got it right all along. Absolutely, absolutely, yeah. and this is and, and this is so important because uh, because we in in this. Are, are talking uh, about homosexuality, the, the subject of prevention mm -hmm. uh, is, of course, has to be rediscovered, let us say, that way. Mm -hmm. uh, this, now it is, uh, you are born that way, and so yeah. it's all fatalism. Yeah. Right? It's all fatalism. Yep. You cannot, you can prevent. You can, you can get a boy who is uh, crippled, but he becomes a boy, mm -hmm. and you can get also a boy who is not a cripple, who is physically firm and so on, but he feels weak, mm -hmm. and he's soft to himself, and he will develop uh, a sickly adoration for uh, boys who are more... Uh, sure, yeah. Uh, yeah, you said the church is... Uh, it reminds me of the mother of uh, Don Bosco, you know Don Bosco? Yes, uh, Saint, um, huh? he's one of my favorites, Don Bosco, yeah. Don Bosco, yeah, Don Bosco was, a, was really a masculine man. Mm -hmm. That's what I want to say. Mm -hmm. Many priests are not masculine now, right. are they? Right, no, no. The lack of masculinity, underdeveloped masculinity, mm -hmm. and they are too much mother's boys. Hmm. And... Um, and therefore, too, there was in the church, and not only in the Catholic Church, uh, uh, and in, in all Christian churches mm -hmm. we see this, there has been a certain feminization yep. uh, by, by these influences. It's, it's not good no. to give women leading roles when they have to command when they have, well, roles which are more suitable to right. them. It subverts the natural order, both both in yes. the church and in the family. Yeah. Yes, and in the family. Yeah. It's also sociologically in mm -hmm. over the world. Yeah. In all tribes, in all cultures, it has been the, the man is the final authority mm -hmm. in the family and in society. Mm -hmm. 
the mother is the authority within the home mm -hmm. of children. And this is general rule. This is instinctive. We are born that way. And we should not, well, uh, be uh, developed too far from our natural instinctive mm -hmm. basis. Mm -hmm. So, so now we're mentioning priests. You mentioned many of the priests are effeminate and everything. So, with all these recent cases now being made public, many many Catholics, I'm yeah, sure right. yourself, you've been Catholic your yeah. your whole life. I'm sure you've been hearing for decades about priests being gay and abuse and everything like that. Yeah. But now, now it's in the public. Where even non Catholics are looking at the church and saying. You guys need to get your house in order. Um, yeah, yeah. What's I don't know to you? What's the main issue here with so many gay priests? We have you know we have people saying uh, I think it was Father Dariusz Oko. He was a Polish theologian and he was uh, tasked by Benedict the Sixteenth to look into the gay lobby in the Vatican. He said something over fifty percent of. Uh, people, the priests working in the Vatican were homosexual. How, how does this? Uh, I don't know. I, I'd like to hear your take on this. In the first way, I think it's it's an exaggeration. Okay. But and and it is uh, lo, uh, uh, there are clusters. Okay. If you um, you have if you have two homosexual priests. Or, or, or people in whatever organization, uh, two homosexual men uh, coming to a certain form of power in, this, in that organization, after some time you, you will have three, four, five, six. Mm -hmm. They form networks right. and clusters. Yeah? And, uh, and so some, mm -hmm. in, and also in dioceses and mm -hmm. seminaries, and, uh, and so on, universities, the university departments. And they promote each other. Also, when, when they have many conflicts in, uh, between them, but they will promote and protect uh, each other. Mm -hmm. So this networking has, has gone on for a long time in the Catholic Church, and I think from the 50s on. Mm -hmm. But let's let me forget the arguments for that or the facts. But it's, it's going on for a long time. And let us not forget one important thing. Huh? In the sixties, we have these um, these deviation in the Catholic Church that sexual sin was not longer a sin. A sin mm -hmm. huh? on paper, yes. In practice, no. Right. So masturbation and so on and so on. There was not an education to chastity, and chastity is is a form of self discipline, mm -hmm. of toughness to yourself. Uh, and it is very important. If if we stop with um, with this uh, attitude, with this education in the home, in but in schools, in society, in the church. Chastity is no, no more, uh, uh, not a sin anymore. Mm, right. Then, then you get this resistance to, um, to humane vitae, mm -hmm. and and this silent rebellion, you might say, it's a silent rebellion of, of more than half of the bishops in the world. They did not do what they had to do. Mm -hmm. They didn't teach their people anymore right. about sexual sin. They didn't teach their priests to teach the faithful. Mm. So, um, in that climate, it is logical that there was no selection anymore on homosexuality or sexual problems mm -hmm. for the seminaries. So, many went in. And it is a universal phenomenon that Many boys with homosexual feelings want to have, want to be a priest, or in Protestant churches, is the same thing. Huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah, a minister. Uh, yeah. Sometimes, sometimes I even say, well, uh, you know, 
if, if a client says yes, yes, and I also have something I think I, I must be a priest or, or have a thought and think, yes, that's one of the symptoms of homosexuality. Okay. Do you understand that? Because to, they to, see it as important. Their, his role, eh? yeah. it's the role of guru, mm -hmm. and it is the role of, uh, of, I think, a wrong conception of Christian love. Mm -hmm. It's it's all mercy and understanding, and and being the nice guy, and also the guy who plays the role of of the of the preacher. Mm -hmm. eh? Right. People are uh, enormous, uh, uh, they admire him. Eh? Right, right. So he is, he, is the, he is the son and the leader, wow. but not the fighter, <laughs> not the father. And here we have the point in the 60s, from the 60s, we have also in the church have the, uh, the era of the fatherless era. Yeah. Era. Fathers and the authorities, fathers, and the firm side of the father was not accepted anymore. So there was a crisis in fatherhood, and it was suppressed, feminism and so on, mm -hmm. but also the weakness of, of the, the priests who did not resist these influences. So you had also the fatherless era in the church. Mm -hmm. It's true that in the Vatican, even I think in the high regions, the firm hand was not found anymore. Hmm. Punishment was not done, was, is not done. If you have in a family the weak father hand we have had in the church all over, mm -hmm. are in yeah, of course, eh, the good exceptions, but yeah, this is right, small, right, right. It was a small, small uh, type. Most of them had no firm hand. So they didn't teach what they had to teach, hmm. and they did not implement what they had to teach. So beautiful words, mm -hmm. and everything was okay. Mm -hmm. uh, words is punish, punishment. We're out. Uh, and wow. uh, that's obedience out. If that's not a description of of the priesthood today, I, I don't know what is. That's that's amazing. This, uh, I wow. Thank, we're running out of time, unfortunately. We, <laughs> I wish we could just keep going on and on. This is fantastic. But yeah, you you, uh, I think you very appropriately drew out a line for us. Where, yeah, you start with kind of the, the, the personal deficiencies, deficiencies in upbringing, and that now it's brought, uh, you've illustrated for that, just uh, how we're seeing that in the church with the priesthood. That's, uh, <laughs> I don't even know what to say to that. Wow. Um, thank you so much. Um, one last thing before we go. I want, you, you wrote, uh, you wrote, several books, and you have a few of them that are in, in English. You have a title, Homosexuality and Hope. You have On the Origins and Treatment of Homosexuality, uh, The Battle for Normalcy, Self-Therapy of Homosexuality, and Science Says No, The Gay Marriage Deception. Um, all of these books, I don't know, if, if you had to recommend only one of those books to people, if people only had a chance to read one, which one would you recommend of your books? <laughs> well, I would. Well, I think the Battle for Normality. It is. It's. The, it's not a, a thick book. Uh, it's, yeah. and, and it has some practical advice. Uh, for, for I must say, the rather small minority of homosexuals who try to do something about it mm -hmm. and who try to fight their weaknesses. They are discriminated upon, also in the church. Yeah. They are not seen. They have no voice. They are not heard. Many many priests and bishops within the church are irritated when they are eh, when 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 they let them hear when, when they when they contact such small groups or whatever. Mm -hmm. But um, so uh, these people have to be encouraged okay. yeah, and right. And another thing I want to say, uh, if we 
talk about prevention. Sure. We had uh, the, the example of Don Bosco, and um, I would say Don Bosco because uh, I deviated. <laughs> That's all right. Don Bosco, Don Bosco had a mother. He had a father. He had a father, of course, but he died young, eh, yeah. his father. Yeah. So Don Bosco was brought up for 80, 90% by his mother. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. With two or three brothers, I believe. This mother is a good example. It was a, a very simple woman. Uh, simple, that is not, uh, she had not uh, much education. Mm-hmm. Uh, poor woman, but she was motherly, she understood the boys, and she was cheerful, and she was tough to herself, very tough. And she said and did, my boys will be tough to themselves. Hmm. And she was not at all soft to them. Mm -hmm. They had to work hard, they had their tasks (laughs) and so on. Mm -hmm. But that is the underlying fortitude, the character of Don Bosco. This is very instructive. So, and hopeful, even we have now nowadays so many uh, lone mothers. Yeah. Yep. Mother, uh, the father went away. With, uh, this, this is uh, a general picture over mm-hmm. overall in our country as well as in the United States. But also, if the mother, well, if she could read a little bit how the mother of Don Bosco did it, mm-hmm. that's very hopeful and stimulating. Hmm. And you can see, you can get if you have a boy, you have been only you have no other children, perhaps. Uh, mm-hmm. his boy. If you follow that line, he will be a man, yeah, and balanced and also, therefore, cheerful. Mm-hmm. So, that is the, the message is it, everybody it, needs fortitude, everyone, right? Yes. yes. <laughs> Very good. Yes. Doctor, thank you so much. It's so awesome hearing from you. This is all great. Uh, yeah, I, I think we'd like to have you on again you know, later on sometime to discuss some other things because I, I know you've, you've given talks. You've, uh, you've been persecuted by the, uh, the homosexual mafia for these things that you're saying. But um, thank you so much. Uh, we appreciate it, and uh, you know we encourage uh, any listeners who are either curious about this or uh, who feel that they may be suffering from these things to look up um, Dr. Gerard's books, um, especially the self-help one that's Battle for Normalty, Self-Therapy of Homosexuality. Thank you so much, Doctor. Thank you very much for having me. <laughs> And all the best with your your work here. Thank you so much. God bless you. God bless.